LSU baseball weekend recap. Game one, K. Doty and Sal Garza both launched multi-run homers over the left field wall Friday night at the box. Skip Burtman Field as LSU earned an 8-1 series victory or 8-1 opening series victory against Indiana on Friday night. Games two and three on Saturday. LSU won 7-4 in game two. Fell in game three, 7-2 as well. Coach Paul Maneri was speaking to the media. This is on the weekend. How many pitchers they used? Hey, we pitched 15 different guys this weekend. The only guy that didn't pitch was Mikhail Hilliard, and he was unavailable because he had a little bit of a tight forearm the last few days. But he threw today in the outfield and felt good, and I would expect that he'd be ready on Tuesday, but he wasn't available for us this weekend. So I don't know if it would have made a difference or not, but we used 15 guys. This is how you find out you know, who you can count on. And, we, you know, our position players did a lot of good things this weekend. But this game, we just didn't meet the challenge of a good arm that they threw against us. You know, we won the series. For me, this loss just means we're not going to go 56-0. and We just got to turn the page and get ready for two big midweek games. I thought this was the year, man. I thought this was the year they were going to go 56-0. and I, I think we have to hit the panic too, button. Man. I think we have to hit the panic button. No, I, I was out there on Saturday. I really like this team. I like this team a lot. I like the I think they I was telling you before the show. I think they have a high ceiling and a high floor. I think the pitching staff that they have, the way that Jaden Hill looked, we'll get into some of this more later in the show, but I'm really high on this team, especially the arms, and, and wasn't disappointed with what I saw. Tigers back in action Tuesday against Southern. First pitch is slated for five o'clock on Tuesday. So that's a four thirty pregame for you on Eagle ninety eight point one. LSU basketball scored fifty three second half points. Shot 56% in the second half as the Tigers tried to rally from 18 points down against Alabama Saturday in dreaded Coleman Coliseum. However, the Crimson Tide were able to hang on for the win, 88-82 against LSU. Tigers now going to host number 12, Kentucky, at the Maravich Center tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Jay Billis, who will be on the call, will be with us tomorrow morning at 8.30, giving a preview to that matchup. But here was Will Wade talking about the, uh, the inability for LSU to be to have any uh, scoring presence in the paint on Saturday? But I thought we just, you know, I thought we were off balance and, and fading away and just weren't tough enough. You know, we just weren't tough enough. And I think part of it was it came so easy for us the first game against them. We didn't have a lot of, we didn't have a lot of finishing behind and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, we were just able to kind of catch it, step, and dunk it. And today it was catch it, step, and there's a body there. Yeah. you got to finish through a body. And we just, we just weren't, weren't tough enough and good enough to finish through that. We mentioned the advantage of having Darius Days on the floor extended minutes versus Missouri, where he probably played his best game as a Tiger in his two years on campus. It was tough for LSU to get going with Days because of the foul trouble he was experiencing on Saturday. Wade was commenting on that. When he's not out there, he only plays like 15, 20 minutes. I mean, it just it really, really hurts. I think he played 14 minutes. I mean, you can't. It's tough for us to play when he's only when he's out there that little. Plus 17 in the 14 minutes that he played. That's the impact that Darius Days has on this team. The foul trouble stuff is is maddening to watch at times because you just want to tell him, like, hey, just, just play defense with your hands behind your back or something. Obviously, you can't do that. But he, he's such a good player, and I love his game so much. He's just got to figure out a way to stay on the floor. As we said, Tigers back on the floor tomorrow night with a quick turnaround as they'll be featured on Super Tuesday. National television audience, ESPN in town. Jay Billis will be on the call tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. He'll be here tomorrow morning, 8.30. LSU got some good news on the recruiting trail over the weekend. UCLA power forward transfer Sharif O'Neal, the son of former LSU and NBA star Shaquille O'Neal, has committed to LSU. He made it official over the weekend, telling Sports Illustrated he's coming down to Baton Rouge. Uh, Major League Baseball, baseball commissioner Rob Manfred defended his punishment of the Houston Astros for, uh, for sign stealing in 2017 and said Major League Baseball will institute new rules to police the use of technology before the 2020 season. In a wide-ranging interview with ESPN's Carl Ravitch, Manfred explained why he didn't punish any of the Astros players for their roles in the scandal, which involves illegal use of technology to decipher the opponent's signs and relay them to Houston's batters in real time. Cody Bellinger of the Los Angeles Dodgers was speaking about this in his locker on Friday afternoon, and he was very candid for a professional athlete. That was Cody Bellinger in his locker. Here was Rob Manfred speaking to ESPN. 
if nothing else, I think we can all agree that we've gotten enough facts out there that plenty of people have made their judgments as to what went on. And once you have a situation in which the 2017 World Series will always be looked at as something different, whether or not you put an asterisk or ask for the trophy back, it, it just, you know, I don't think it makes that much difference. I think we did what we should do. That was we found the facts and we were transparent about them. Last, once you go down that road of changing what happens on the field, I just don't know how you decide where you stop. Well, that's your <laughs> that's your responsibility, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> that's oh, why you're man. the commissioner. He's uh, He's not come out looking very well from this whole situation. I remember hearing an interview with him on the Levitard show a couple of years ago, and yeah. he just he lost his temper like on radio. I was like, I don't know if this guy has the constitution to be a professional sports commissioner. And now he comes to his first real like serious look. Everyone's paying attention. I got to make some decisions, and he's. It's not necessarily the dis the decisions that I disagree with. I mean, you could argue either way. Like you strip the title, all that stuff. It's the way that he's handled it and the PR from his perspective and from the Astros' perspective. It's been a disaster, but like from my perspective as someone that doesn't really care about Major League Baseball that much, it's awesome, and I love it. And like now I want to watch Major League Baseball because it just adds so much intrigue. I agree. We were talking about it before the show. They should embrace it. I think the Houston Astros should go all black jerseys, walk into every road stadium <laughs> knowing that they are hated, and embrace it. NBA All-Star Game was magnificent over the weekend. It was a tribute to Kobe Bryant from start to finish. This will be a part of the weekend winners, but Team USA – ultimately turned the game around with a 39 points to take a 151-131 lead in the uh, over the world team world game. And this was a Friday night. Zion Williamson had 14 points. He was 7-11 from the field goal uh, from the field. Uh, last night in the NBA All-Star team, Team LeBron won over Team Giannis, 157-155. Local charities received a half a million dollars in donations. Kawhi Leonard won the first Kobe Bryant MVP award. For the Pelicans, limited action for Brandon Ingram. Only two points, one board, one assist, one steal in his limited minutes. We'll get into this later, but that fourth quarter with the Elam ending where you've got you've to get to a certain score to win the game was so much fun. I'm not kidding. It was the most fun I've had watching basketball all year. It just added this different dimension to the competitiveness and to the, the tension of the game. It was a blast. It was awesome. Donaldsonville Glass and Body brings you off the bench daily here online, dgbauto.com. Remember, online is where you can find them. They're also located at 415 Division Street. If you were in an accident over the weekend, you need car repair, you need collision repair, remember Donaldsonville Glass and Body is the best in the area. 415 Division Street with free 24-hour towing for you. So if you need the automobile moved from the accident site, from the shop, the uh, from your house to 415 Division Street, get in touch with them this morning at dgbauto.com. 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge, and Benny's are giving you a chance to clean your ride inside and out. Visit 104.5 ESPN.com to register for your chance to win unlimited car washes and interior cleanings for three months. Benny's has nine locations to serve you. Find out more at Benny'sCarWash.com. All right, some XFL scores from the weekend. D.C. stayed undefeated, defeating New York 27-0. Seattle defeated Tampa Bay 17-9. Dallas, here we come. Renegades, Landry Jones is a bum, but we'll take it 25-18 in the Roughnecks. All right. It's weird T-Bob's not here today, yep. you know? I feel like he's uh, hiding out. <laughs> 28-24. Houston still undefeated. R uh, Rivs looks like she's got the top seed. I knew it all along. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Cole Kublik will be checking in on Friday with our XFL commentator. Uh, all right, those are your headlines. What's trending here on Off the Bench? 